This is from our original mission statement, and I say ours. This was actually Ken Travers, who, um, I'll turn it over to him in just a minute, it, uh, from the original MISTI office uh, uh, brochure. Um, I'll note our board of advisors at the time, Dan Alpert, um, who was uh, very important to me personally and to the MISTI office, uh, former director of the Center for Advanced Study here, Chip Roos, Steve Schomburg, and Richard Wilson, whom I didn't know. Um, He's now president of Illinois Wesleyan. And uh, uh, Ken started the office in 1993 with Evan Glazer, a research assistant who probably some of you still remember. He's now a principal in Virginia. Thomas Jefferson School of yeah, Math and Science. Like one of the top schools in the country, the yep. top school, high school in the country, I think. And uh, Vita Revilla, uh, who was the uh, part-time secretary. And originally the goal uh, in 1993 um, was were the following. Let's see here. That goes. Um, to inform campus personnel about various MISTI activities, math, science, and technology education. Uh, to inform the community at large about, college, about schools, colleges, the general public, about MISTI activities. Um, to promote collaboration between them, including publicizing them. And later I'll talk about how we kind of come full circle on some of those. Uh, organizing activities uh, such as visiting speakers, teleconferences, and interested people or persons interested in MISTI, and um, helping identify sources of funding for future activities and um, to achieve greater collaboration among those activities. Um, actually, maybe now is a good time, Ken, if you want to okay. talk a little bit about how things came about. Well, thank you, uh, George. Um, George Francis, who are inviting us over here. Really appreciate this opportunity. It's a long time since I've been in Oakdale, particularly in the catacombs. They haven't changed much down here, except for the hard one. <laughs> it's great to be back with you, and I appreciate very much the cooperation over the years that we have had over in the office with the mathematics department. It's been very good. Several faculty with co-appointments, and also, of course, our students. Who are the essence of what we try to do around this place. And George, for your uh, leadership in the office, um, it's been wonderful to have you take over and take the office beyond where I and the original board ever thought we might go. A little bit about how the office started. Uh, I was in, at the National Science Foundation in the early 1990s. And one of, lots of good things about being there. One, of course, is that so many interesting people come by with great ideas about what they would like to do in math, science, engineering, and uh, technical education. For example, uh, Jaime Escalante was by. Some of you may recognize that name as being the person featured in the movie Stand, Stand and, and Deliver. Jaime yeah. I mean, uh, Escalante was at um, Garfield High School in Los Angeles. He wanted to teach calculus to some of those kids and they said, why do you want to teach calculus to those losers? So, uh, and the story you should watch the movie if you haven't. Uh, NCTM was very proud of the movie. Uh, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics years ago, uh, and promoting it and so on. But somebody else who was, in some ways, more important to me professionally was Ted Brown. Ted Brown was on the advisory committee for the Education Directorate at the National Science Foundation. Ted at that time was uh, professor of uh, chemistry here and also the vice chancellor for academic affairs. That title and that position is now refigured as the provost. So he was the provost at the time. And hey, if I hadn't been at NSF, there's no way I'd have gotten to talk to the provost. <laughs> you know how it works around here. Just like Ted, you might, I mean, um, Ted, you might mention a little later, or I'll right now, how many high schools in the state of Illinois have had two 
Count them two chancellors visit their campus. <laughs> so anyway, I don't. Uh, that's something that we can uh, brag about in our around coffee or beer or something. So uh, Ted Brown and I got to hang out some there, and he was saying, "Well, what do you, what would you like to really like to do when you get back to Champaign, Urbana?" And we talked a little bit, and uh, we got on the topic of all of the things that go on on this campus in K-12, K-16, math, science, technology, engineering, education. And we started to list to some of them, like physics van, and I don't know if math net, net math was going on then, but anyway, mm -hmm. that sort of Starting. activity. Um, and uh, so we, so Ted Brown as Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs gave us funding for three years to get us going, to, hire a grad student, Evan Glazer, and to hire a part-time secretary and so on. And the goal, I think the magic word was um, synergy. That is, the individual efforts around the campus, to what extent can they combine to come up with something where they could collaborate with each other, learn from each other, communicate with each other, and so on. Kind of a revolutionary idea, right? Across, <laughs> across departments, across colleges. Wow. So anyway, that was our vision. And um, we were sort of sitting around one day with uh, Steve Schomburg from the chancellor's office and Dan Alpert saying, well, how many projects do you think there are? And somebody said, well, maybe 50. Somebody else said, oh, I think there are 80. Well, when we got into that business, we found over 100 <laughs> projects on that campus, and there are probably even more today. Uh, and uh, we s then had the vision then of trying to find some way that they would collaborate. And that was, hence the Office for Mathematics, Science, and Technology Education. That's how it got, guarded, got going, and uh, the rest is history, sort of, from yeah. then on. And we'll have our 20th anniversary maybe next year, is it? Well, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> 1993, yeah. fall of 1993. Or, uh, yeah, fall of 92 when you started? Have a party, oh yeah. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't come on board till 1994, and um, uh, since we, we've evolved, our mission has changed, but stayed similar in a lot of ways. Um, we're a community of practice, and this is a term that Dan Alpert and I uh, uh, used when we were talking about MISTI. Um, because it really is more of a, a community than a, any particular project, because we have lots of projects going. And they're dispersed among the academic researchers here at the university, lots of um, K-12 school teachers, administrators, um, students at all level. And we're working to enhance student achievement um, in math, science, and technology education. And we, in particular, focus on uses of technology. Um, we have <coughs> sustained collaborative partnerships, one of which we're going to talk about in that, that we're, we've had for a long time and that we're going to be reinvigorating, I think. Um, promote the training of education professionals, um, including um, university students who work with our office, and who are part of our, our meetings and events. Um, we develop instructional models, modules. When um, I came to uh, MISTI, we were categorizing projects as part of the MISTI mission at that time. I had been a, s a school teacher and um, uh, for a while was working at, at Los Alamos and had heard, I was writing a technical manual and, and learning computer programming there, and there was this new thing that had come out of Illinois that everybody had to have. It was called Mosaic. <laughs> this is, you know, have you seen X Mosaic? Um, so that's, you know, people wanted to model the software that, that was being developed at the DNA sequence database that I was working on. I said, we need to make something like Mosaic where everybody sees it and they want to get to it. You know, let's get that. So when I came here, uh, uh, putting things on the web, including these projects, was a very new thing. In fact, the, it, Mosaic and the internet were kind of synonymous at that. People would say Mosaic and mean the World Wide Web. Um, uh, and having been a school teacher, I was also interested in how uh, math teachers were 
would and could use this new tool to facilitate instruction. So we started making a small database of, of those things. And through Dr. Travers' classes, we were populating it with activities. And those modules became very popular. In the um, mid to late 90s, we, we were up over a million hits um, in a month, um, which back then was quite a bit. <laughs> in like 1997, 98, we uh, uh, got a lot. And most of them was to those lessons database. And then we, um, we formed our first partnership by outreach, by a connection that came through the web from Ed Sussmilch. And this was that letter. Nice, another nice thing about the, <laughs> the internet is it keeps the archive. So I've got this message from July 10th of 1995 when Ed Sussmilch found information about one of the projects and, and uh, wrote to us saying, you know, I'm interested in finding out uh, things that, that we could do together. At the time, it was avi aviation. But when our project moved forward, other, uh, our collaboration moved forward, other projects came to the fore. Ed, do you want to uh, start here talking about our collaboration back in the 90s and what our goals were then? Sure. I, I forgot about that too. <laughs> the, um, we've, we've been interested all along in, in trying to validate or lend credibility to the math, science, and uh, language arts areas that we're teaching and learning that goes on in our programs. Dave, uh, Dave, yeah. Technology Center for Faith is a, what's known as an area of career center, which means that we, re we have students from all of the DuPage County schools who come to us. Um, so since 1994, 95, we've been looking for ways to develop credibility and also enhance the learning that goes on in these areas. Generally speaking, at back in the mid-90s, the kids that we got here were were not, they were the kids who didn't find their way into math classes or into the science classes. They were the kids that, well, we don't know what to do with them, so we're going to send them over there to Addison and we'll see what, what, what they can do with them. Um, my, my, my first introduction on my first day here, I was walking through the building, and the gentleman I was replacing was pointing out to me that on our, um, that all of our switch plates were, were riveted to the walls as opposed to having screws put in. <laughs> and, and he says, this is typical of the kind of kids that we have here. He says, they have rewired the bathrooms a number of times. And, and so we've had to rivet the plates on so that they can't take them off because they're always walking around with screwdrivers in their hand. And he saw that as a bad thing. And I saw it as a good thing because anybody who can rewire a bathroom with 117 volts running through while the power's on, I'm impressed. <laughs> and, you know, that, that's, that, that's hard to do. And, and so my, my respect for the kids went up immediately, and we said, you know, these are smart kids. They're just not in the math class. So we looked to the University of Illinois. In fact, I was down there. My, my kids went to the U of I. And I, I've told Ken the story that I was walking down the quad one day, and I noticed on the frieze of one of the buildings a quote that I can't remember, and I don't remember which building it's on, and maybe I was just dreaming it. But it said something about how the University of Illinois is, has, has a responsibility, or how higher education has a responsibility to assist in the development of a workforce and a labor force. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that will move the state forward. I think our and motto I, is and I thought to myself, labor, you know, that's not a whole lot different from what we do. We just do it with a different set, of, a different clientele. So, so that's what drove me to the to the original U of I website, which got me to to Misty. Um, I contacted Ken, and um, Ken said, "Why don't you come down for lunch? Let's see what happens. Let's talk." Um, and being being like any other good administrator, but I can find a way to get out of the building and get a free lunch out of the deal, I'm up for it. <clears throat> so I, I drove down, drove down, and we, we went to lunch over in the, um, over in the Union. Yeah. And 
that was kind of the beginning of it. Um, I think over the years we have, uh, we did any of a number of different things. Uh, we, I think we had a, I'm not sure we always had the, a common vision. Uh, Ken's agenda I think was maybe a little bit different than mine, but they were sure complimentary. Um, and, you know, and I think we, we, did, we did some good things. Uh, one of the, George had talked about the whole concept of, uh, you know, of classifying projects and things like that. That was one of the things that, that I, I first got involved with George in was that the idea was let's develop a database that's tied to the Illinois Learning Standards so that a, a geometry teacher, if, if a geometry teacher is working on a specific Illinois Learning Standard, and they know that this kid loves construction. They can go in there, they can find the Illinois Learning Standard, they can say construction, and up will pop a, um, a curriculum module that will, that will catch this kid's interest. Because the kid knows the geometry, he just doesn't know what to call it. And the math teacher knows the geometry, but doesn't know anything about the construction side of it. So by using the internet and the database, linking it together. Um, and we worked on that. We never really brought that to, to fruition, but there's now a project in Illinois called the Illinois Occupational Education System, I think, IOES, which is run out of, out of uh, ISU. And that's a direct outgrowth of the work that, that we were doing with MISTI. And that now provides curriculum modules all across the country, you know, or that's available on the internet that does just what, what we had talked about. Um, <clears throat> So even though we didn't accomplish it, we, we were able to develop the idea to the point where somebody else was able to take it and move it forward. Um, so that's kind of where, where, you know, some of the things we were doing, we, we never did accomplish exactly what we started out to. And then due, due to a whole bunch of reasons, probably, probably about seven or eight years ago, uh, Technology Center DuPage chose to uh, stop working with directly with MISTI. Uh, that was a mistake that I, I feel a huge mistake on our part. Uh, fortunately, we were back organizationally to the point where we're talking about reinvigorating that that partnership. And uh, I think, based on my conversation with George, we're kind of back on the same track as we were 15 or 16 years ago. Concept being, you've got math teachers, we've got math students. Uh, my math students don't want to go to the math class. Uh, so how do we teach a math not in the math class? Uh, and I think as we were playing with GoToMeeting yesterday, George made the point that the technology is probably at the point of reliability where we can actually use it, where 15 years ago it just wasn't there. Yeah. Um, we so I think. So I think that's kind of where we're at now. Um, it was a wonderful opportunity for us. Our teachers enjoyed it. I think a number of our teachers went on to get graduate degrees, some of them from the University of Illinois, some of them from other schools. Uh, but a huge part of that was all of a sudden our teachers, people in, we don't, I'll use it because we're among friends, in vocational education, we don't use the D word anymore. It's not yeah. called career and technical education. Yeah. And people in career and technical education have kind of a, uh, a built-in inferiority complex. And for the University of Illinois to, to spend time with us, as Ken said, they have two chancellors visit us and say, you know what, you guys are doing some good things up there, and let's figure out how we can work together. It, it really helped our organization a great deal. And I, I, I think it, it's helped a great deal of the CTE across the country. Um, and, and CTE right now, I think, is on the verge, career and technical education is on the verge of being a, of really being a breakthrough. Um, we, we, know how to, we know how to catch the kids' interests. We, we have the things that interest them. You have the things that they really need to know. Um, and by working together, we'll be able to actually teach kids what they need to know in an environment that they really enjoy. Uh, so that's kind of where we're going, I hope. Thanks, Ed. Um, I, I'm going to uh, have a few more slides, and then um, we can talk 
uh, I think, in, in um, talk more about the future. These slides are, are from back in the olden days, thanks to the Wayback Machine, um, which it, at the Internet Archive allows you to see what your website looked like 10 years ago or 12 years ago. So this is from January of, I think, 1997. And um, at the time, we had um, the list of projects that math, science, and technology education projects. We had statistics and math lessons in general. Um, these things that focused on the uh, resources, the people that we had available to create things. Um, we had uh, our project with uh, the Technology Center of DuPage. Um, we had a directory of, uh, which was then called, by the way, the Davia Career Center. I forget when you changed your name, Ed. It was 98, 99? Yeah. Yeah, probably. And um, the office was still pretty small then. Some of those lessons that were there were um, things that were done by actually one of the original teachers who was using the web in, in some way was Susan Boone in Texas. Um, some teachers here who, uh, Jim Peterson's now at Bloomington, yeah. but I think he was working <laughs> at NCSA. Um, Evan and I, um, uh, uh, Amar Patel, who is a teacher in Illinois still. I, I don't, haven't seen him for a while. Well, all of them creating materials. Where? He's at Conan High School. Yeah, had Conan. Him for a teacher. You had him for a teacher? <laughs> I work with him on a regular basis. Actually. Really? Cool. Really? Cool. Yep. He was in um, creating, he created, actually, it's still mm -hmm. on our site. And, one uh, of our more popular, or at least yeah, it was one of our more popular. A chi square module um, that uses a spreadsheet. That's really very good. Um, actually, and to this day, this descriptive statistics module <laughs> created by Jay Hill um, is incredibly popular. Um, one of the most popular uh, uh, sites on our page. And in fact, if you key in descriptive statistics in Google, I'm sure it will be in the top so, 10 still yeah. after um, some uh, 15 years. At that time, too, we had what we called MST days at TCD, the fourth um, it took place in 2000, um, where we would invite teachers from around the DuPage area to come to the Technology Center of DuPage and kind of showcase the, and showcase the projects that we had. Um, I should acknowledge there too, Partnership Illinois, which Steve Schomburg led there, was, was instrumental in, in yeah. making all of this happen. And, Steve helped uh, uh, bring two chancellors, Michael Aiken and, and um, uh, who was the, the woman was the next? Was it Nancy it? Cantor, Nancy of course. Nancy, Nancy Cantor um, both visited the Technology Center of DuPage. Um, and uh, I put a link to this. It, we, we can put it on the web. Um, uh, so you can see some of the modules that, that we created with the Technology Center of DuPage. Um, the digital electronics folks have always found Ohm's Law to be a challenge. Um, we had a module where kids would design uh, uh, a cup, and they would send it to the AutoCAD class, and they would develop a 3D yeah. visualization of it. Yeah. They did um, it at Central. Yeah. 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 yeah, did it at Central. They made the base plate. They put in uh, <laughs> designs for a computer base plate, again, sending it to the machine tool, who would actually make the, the part for them and send it back. Mm -hmm. So there, er, if there were errors, it would be physically represented. The kids would swear, that isn't what I said. It's yeah. not <laughs> where it wasn't. Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah. Um, so, and, um, and we tried uh, uh, a couple times using um, the uh, Mathematica modules that, that Jerry put together. Um, for Math 116, which at the time he called Math Before Calculus, and uh, offered that class at TCD. And this is uh, kind of pixelated uh, version of uh, a pixelated photograph of Dustin Lindley uh, teaching at TCD using that uh, Mathematica module for Math 116. And um, we offered it a couple of times there. I think the, the students liked it liked it very much. Um, but uh, 
it said it, it wasn't, um, it, did, it didn't find the right mix for, for those students who were get excited about things like automotive mechanics. It was really very much still math, still math. Um, um, and I want to mention, this was a big project that a um, number of people in this room, including Peter and Kathleen, were involved with. We um, had a state grant to make, to make professional development materials, and this binder of, of uh, math curriculum came out of it. We called it M2T2, Math Materials for Tomorrow's Teachers. Um, there were groups that, of administrators, mathematicians, uh, uh, Izzy Weinswig and uh, UIC as well as Peter Brownfeld, um, administrators, teachers uh, who helped put these things together. And then we did workshops all over the state. And that was the early part of the new century. And um, in 2005, I uh, wanted to mention that because uh, Deborah, was the, Deborah Woods was the principal investigator on this project. Um, we wrote another state grant to do workshops with teachers, both in Champaign and Bradley Bourbonnais. Um, BBCHS is Bradley Bourbonnais Community High School, and they um, our most recent partnership, uh, which we started when uh, Ken and I went went to visit and look at their math program in 2004, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so we've been working with them for the past eight years. And uh, these provide lots of opportunities for connections with teachers. I just got an email from the science teacher saying, hey, let's do something at NSTA next year. Hmm. So the, uh, I, I think a recurring theme in MISTI's evolution is the connection and, and consistent work with classroom teachers. Where are we on the news? It looks like. Yes, this, yeah, they, we were on uh, <laughs> WCIA. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they did a, a news story on us, so. Uh, Are you going to tell them my nickname for you? What was your nickname? Oh, Sugar Daddy? Yes. <laughs> um, sure, say, 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 here, say I something would, about that, Kathy. I would go off to the conferences, NCTM, supercomputing, it didn't matter. I would go off to the conference and I would see something absolutely wonderful that I wanted. And I would come back, and I would go over to see George, and I would say, this is what I saw. This is why I want it. Get it for me, please. <laughs> and he would. <laughs> and the only thing I had to do was do what I told him I would do with it. And that's, you know, and I did wonderful things with the stuff that George gave me. And I think it really, all of it connected with the kids. So I call him my sugar dad. <laughs> I have to say, I'm not particularly proud of, of just that we provide <laughs> stuff, but I'm proud to, you know, that that we can um, we be what I refer to as a, a, a we're a faith-based operation, <laughs> which which means we 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 do the work or or yeah we start doing the work and we have we faith that the resources will yeah. appear the mechanisms yeah. will appear to yep. to continue to to let us do it so and so far so good so uh, those are a few things. Uh, but, but right now, we, we have many things going. And we've grown, um, have a number of full-time, uh, several full-time staff now, and a lot of students, including um, some of the people in this room. Uh, well, at least Andrew. Um, and uh, although he's graduated, so, <laughs> so he doesn't count. Um, we have a math science partnership that's new with Champaign Schools, um, working on uh, math and connecting to the Common Core. Uh, the MISTI office, um, and I mentioned coming full circle, we um, created and maintained the public engagement portal. So all of these projects, which initially we started out keeping track of, now we keep track of in, in um, I think, a, a more thorough way are going to expand that to the sustainability portal. Abigail here is part of eToys Illinois, which is, and Kathleen uh, also, um, and uh, Kathleen Harness and Professor Lenny Pitt in computer science. Um, to name a few, it's a, a project to expand the use of the open source authoring tool eToys, and um, you can learn programming. Uh, by using this, in fact, it, 
Starting in first grade. Starting in first grade, yeah. And there are, on the Toys Illinois site, thousands of projects created by children and adults. Um, and Catherine Harnett, who's a, the, gift, the enrichment teacher at Dr. Howard, is really the yeah. mm. and, past and, master. And there's growing excitement lately uh, in uh, uh, collaboration with business community uh, uh, and um, uh, entrepreneur in the research park. So that we're optimistic this will move forward. We are also part of Project Lead the Way, which is a campus initiative to put in pre-engineering programs in high schools, a couple of which are, are at Technology Center of DuPage. Um, but there are teachers all around the state who are doing these programs, digital electronics, introduction to engineering. Um, U of I is the affiliate university for that. Um, Jenna Sebestic is an, an instructor for the Gateway to Technology, which is uh, eighth grade, uh, the youngest that, that these projects go, uh, eighth grade modules. Um, uh, Morton Lunsgore, a physicist who's uh, also part-time in MISTI, is working on professional development modules for a uh, model for teachers to integrate uh, high school science laboratories into instruction. This is related to physics, and he's got a, a research board grant to pursue that. Barbara Hoog, um, in curriculum and instruction, uh, is the director of Project Neuron, an NIH grant that we're working with. We, and we provide support in terms of uh, their website, um, materials, and infrastructure to kind of keep going and advice on, on contacts in the schools. Our partner, Bradley Bourbonnet, has two teachers involved with Project Neuron. Um, the power of the wind is, cur is more curriculum that we created. Um, Jana Sebestic, in particular, wrote this for National 4-H. It was the first of their new set science engineering technology curriculum as extension is changing um, its focus. Uh, I, I'm thinking that there is space for an organization like MISTI in the new, uh, what's becoming a revised understanding of, of engagement um, for the land grant universities. And um, the uh, uh, power of the wind module is an example of the direction we're going. Uh, also, trustworthy cyber infrastructure for the power grid, TSIPG, is a, a program at the Information Trust Institute. And we are, at MISTI, are a key part of the education outreach in, in that grant. And I put TCD, exclamation mark, question, uh, question mark, exclamation point, because um, we will maybe reinvigorating our relationship with Ed and um, the Technology Center of DuPage in um, coming uh, uh, weeks and years. So, and that's, that's uh, a, a brief overview of where we've been and, and where we are.